Well, praise the Lord, everybody. So glad that everyone could join us here tonight for service. Praise God. We got a great little Bible study that we're going to get into here in just a minute. So we appreciate everyone coming on. Hope everybody's doing great out there. How's everybody doing? Amen. Awesome. Praise God. So we're going to go ahead and get into a Bible study tonight. Tonight, we're going to be talking about a call to repair. Amen. A call to repair. Praise God. So before we get started, let's just go ahead and let's just open up with prayer. Let's ask the Lord to be with us, to just let his presence come in here. Even though we're in our homes, you know, the Lord will meet us anywhere. Amen. Praise God. So let's just go ahead and let's just lift up our hands, raise up our voices, and let's just begin to cry out to the Lord. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for your presence, God, that is in this place, Lord. And I thank you, God, for allowing us to come here tonight, Lord, and to just be in your presence, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you would allow your voice to speak to our hearts, God. In the midst of this storm, God, I pray, Lord, that you would pierce through everything that's going on around us, Lord, and speak directly to our hearts, God. I pray, Lord, that the purpose for this Bible study would be accomplished, Lord, and that your will would be performed. I pray, Lord, that you would anoint me, God, as your vessel, Lord, and that you would use me for your glory, Lord. Speak to us in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you, Lord, and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone said amen. Praise God. So tonight, if you have your Bibles, we're going to be turning to the book of First Kings, and we're going to be coming from chapter 18. So First Kings chapter 18, and then we're going to start reading at verse, let's say verse uh, 10. Praise God. So the Bible says, as the Lord thy God liveth, there is no nation or kingdom whither my Lord have not sent to seek thee. And when they said, he is not there, he took an oath of the kingdom and nation, and they found thee not. Now thou sayest, go and tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. And it shall come to pass, as soon as I gone from thee, that the spirit of the Lord shall carry thee, whither I know not. And so when I come, tell Ahab, he cannot find thee, and he shall slay me. But I, thy servant, fear the Lord from my youth. Was it not told, my Lord, what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord, how I hid a hundred of the Lord's prophets by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water? And now thou sayest, go and tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here, and he shall slay me. And Elijah said, as the Lord of hosts lives, before whom I stand, I will surely show myself unto him this day. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet with Elijah. Praise God. Now, Ahab was not necessarily one of the people that was a fan of Elijah. Amen. So for Elijah to come out and say this, it was like he was saying, hey, I'm ready to meet him face to face so that we can get these things discussed. Verse 17, and it came to pass that when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, art thou he that troubleth Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou in thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. Now therefore, send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. So he's calling them all together. He said, I want everyone to get together for this because we're going to have a discussion. There's some things that are going on that need to get brought to the table, and we've got to get some understanding. Praise God. We go down to verse 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, how long? Look at your neighbor and say, how long? How long? How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him, not a word. Praise God. Now, if we look at this scripture and we begin to kind of dissect and dive into it, Elijah came to the people and he asked them a question and it was direct. He said, how long are you going to halt between these two opinions? Now, if you look up that word halt in the original context, it actually means to leap. It means to hop, kind of limp. So he's saying, how long are you going to be 
limping and hopping, going back and forth. You know, right now we've got a lot of time on our hands. Amen. Praise God. There's some things that we're able to do that we've always said, man, I wish I could do this. If I had more time, I would do this. If I was able to, I would do this. Well, praise God, the Lord opened up an opportunity for us to be able to have a little bit of extra time on our hands. And what are we doing with that time? Amen. Praise God. Elijah comes and he says, how long have you been hopping back and forth between these two opinions? Now, if you look up the, the, the words, and as you go here and you start to see you got these two opinions, it actually is basically saying, how long are you going to be double minded? How long are you going to want to live for God for a minute, but then go and live for Baal for, you know, the next minute? How long are you going to be limping back and forth, hopping over the sides of the fence, trying to serve these other gods? And he asked this question. It was very direct. And it was, it was straight cut right to the point. He hit them exactly where they were. Now, if you look up the opinions, what that means, it comes from a word that actually means to be disbranched. Now, when I read that and I studied it, it just blew my mind because I started thinking about how Jesus is the vine, as it says in John 15. Jesus is the vine and we are his branches. Amen. Praise God. If we are severed from the vine, then we can bear no fruit. We're not going to have any fruit that we'll be able to bear for severed from the vine. And when we read the scripture, he's saying, how long are you going to be halted between these two opinions? How long are you going to be disbranched? How long are you going to be broken off from the very supply that is giving you your life? You know, without Jesus, we don't have the strength to face tomorrow. Praise God. Now, they were in, in Mount Carmel. They were in Carmel. And if you look up that word, what it means is it means a garden land. It was a place that was fruitful. It was a place that was supposed to yield increase. It's strange to me that we can be in a season of prosperity in our life, but barren. It's all the contingent upon whether or not we are connected to the source. And who's that source? It's Jesus. Praise God. We've got to plug back in. You know, as Brother James said on Sunday night when he was talking about he had a great analogy. I'll be honest. I don't remember the whole thing, but basically we got to plug in. Amen. Praise God. We got to recharge our batteries. We can't expect to be yielding fruit if we are not plugged into the source. A tree can be in the greatest, most fruitful land, but if it's not connected and if it's not rooted, it's not going to bring forth fruit. Amen. Praise God. Right now, I believe we are in a season of fruitfulness where we'll be able to bring forth some great fruit, but it's up to us being connected to the source. If we stay halted, hopping from these two opinions, where one day we're wanting to live for God and we're fired up, but then the very next day we're kind of faltering, going back and forth with what we think. You know, the Bible says that a double-minded man is unstable and is all his ways. Man, instability. I don't want to have that in my walk with God. Amen. Elijah goes and, and he tells him, he's like, this is what we're going to do. He said, we're going to go ahead and we're going to have us a kind of a test. It's going to be a show off. We're going to see who the real God is. So I want you to go and get your sacrifice. I want you to do what you got to do. And the God that answers by fire, he's going to be God. Amen. So as they go, you know, he got the bullocks. They cut it in pieces, verse 23 of chapter 18 and 1 Kings 23 says, let them therefore give us two bullocks. Let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on the wood. Put no fire under it and I'll dress the other bullock and lay it on the wood. And put no fire under. You call on the name of your gods and I'll call on the name of the Lord. And God, the God that answers by fire, let him be God. This people answered and they said, it is well. Praise God. Then they go on and they start the process. You know, if we start reading in verse 26, it says, and they took the bullock, which was given them, and they dressed it. They prepared it. They got it ready. They were getting their sacrifices ready for what the Lord was going to do. And then they called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon. 
saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar, which was made. Praise God. You know, we're going to construct altars in our lives. They had an altar that was resurrected for a false god. And when their god did not answer, what it says is they leaped upon the altar. That word leap is the same word that we saw earlier when he said, how long are you going to halt between these two opinions? How long are you going to go and, and hop and, and try to, you know, sometimes we can get a dance, but we don't know how to get a walk. Amen. We can start dancing in the spirit, but we don't know how to walk in the spirit. Praise God. And when that happens, they started hopping and leaping, saying, what's going on? They hopped on the altar. Is there something, something wrong here? What in the world is happening? Verse 27, and it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them. And he said, cry aloud, for he is a God. Either he's talking or he's pursuing or he's in a journey. Peradventure, he sleeps. He must be awakened. Maybe you should cry louder. Verse 28, and they cried aloud and they cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets till the blood gushed out upon them. Now, these weren't just little cuts, but these were gashes that were being inflicted upon themselves. Praise God, because they couldn't understand what was going on with this situation. They knew that something wasn't working and they thought, well, maybe we need to get some more blood involved. So they began to try to cover their sacrifice with their own blood. And when I think about that in our own walks with God, I think of me trying to get the Lord to accept the sacrifice. And when I see that it's not happening, I want to put more effort into it. I got to put more of myself into it, more of my flesh, more of my life. I got to begin to pour out more of me when really I'm just not plugged into the source. Praise God. The God can't answer by fire if the God is not real. Amen. And if we've opened up our world to idols, we can't expect God to bless us. Amen. That's how we are barren in a fruitful land. Whereas if we serve the true God, we can be bearing in a barren land. Amen. Praise God. Verse 29. And it came to pass when midday was passed and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that there was neither voice nor any to answer nor any that regarded. Verse 30. And Elijah said unto all the people, come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar. He repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Man, see, there was multiple altars there. There was an altar to Baal, but then there had been an altar that was built to the Lord. And Elijah looked and he said, first thing I've got to do is I got to repair what's been broken down. We have to repair before we prepare. We can't prepare the sacrifice if we have not repaired the altar in our life. Amen. And that word repair, it actually means to heal, to make healthful. Amen. The Lord said, I've got healing with your name written on it, but first you need to heal your altar. First, you've got to go back to the thing that you once set up for me so that we could have a line of communication and for sacrifice to be received. And I want you to begin to repair that. Repair the very thing that you have allowed life to break down. You know, we all get busy. It could have been that there was a lot of distractions, a lot of things that were, you know, competing for their attention. And over a period of time, neglect began to settle in. I don't necessarily know that it was intentional, but nonetheless, it was something that was evident and it was happening. And before they knew, they had drifted so far from the one true God that they started serving a false God. Now, Elijah goes and he takes the 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar, as great would contain two measures of seed. Elijah didn't just start trying to set the wood up on the dirt. 
but he took the 12 stones and he began to arrange them accordingly so that the altar could be built right there with the stones and with the wood being laid upon them. You know, if we try to build our altar on the dirt, all we're doing is building an altar upon our flesh because that's our human nature. We come from the dust and from the dust we shall return. But if we're going to build an altar, we got to make sure that we build it upon the rock. Amen. We got to make sure that we build it upon the rock that is higher than I. Amen. Praise God. We can't allow our flesh to be the thing that is going to hold our sacrifice, but it's got to be built upon the rock of God. Amen. And as he arranged the 12 stones, I think about that, and it could have been almost like a reminder to the children saying, hey, remember where it is that you came from. Remember what it is that the Lord has done from your ancestors and what he has brought you from to where now you are here. Sometimes we need to look back to see where it is that the Lord brought us from because we get forgetful. We start to forget what it is that the Lord has done for us in our life. And when we get forgetful, all of a sudden we begin to get idle and we forget everything that the Lord has done. And then we start to travel off. Amen. Praise God. Verse 32. And with the stone, verse 33. And he put the wood in order and he cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said, fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. He said, do it a second time. They did it a second time. He said, do it a third time. They did it a third time. And the water ran about the altar, and he filled the trench also with water. What was he doing? He said, I'm not leaving any way for there to be coincidence to come into this situation. I want you to know that this is the God that's going to answer by fire. If the Lord were to come down and to consume this sacrifice, it could only be God especially after he put all this water and he's got the 12 barrels of water that are saturating not only the sacrifice, but the wood as well. And then there's a trench about it. He goes on in verse 36. And it came to pass at that time, at the time of offering of the evening sacrifice, that Elijah the prophet came near and he said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that that art God in Israel and that I am thy servant and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me. Oh, how many of us in this day and time want to be able to have an audience with God? Amen. We need an audience with the creator of this world. We want to be able to have an audience to where we know that when we call upon the name of the Lord, that he's going to hear our voice. Amen. I don't know about you, but I don't want my voice to fall on deaf ears, especially in this day and time that we're living right now with everything that's going on. Praise God. The only comfort that we have is to know that we know the peace speaker, that we know the God who can speak into a storm and calm the winds and the waves. We know that we have a God that we serve who is able to speak and say, let there be light and light comes into existence. We know that we have a God who is for us. And I want to know that that God is going to let me speak and he be able to hear my voice. And Elijah was saying, because I know him, I know that I'm right with him. I have healed the altar upon where I'm going to speak. I know my voice is going to be heard. Man, that gives you boldness and that gives you confidence. Fear is not going to be able to reside where there's that kind of confidence because that's when you are beginning to be perfect in his love. Amen. And where there's perfect love, it expels and it casts out all fear. Praise God. Because then we're not worried about judgment and about punishment to come because we know that everything is in line, that we have repaired and prepared everything in accordance with how it needs to be. So when it comes to pass that it's time for us to speak, I know that I've got an audience with my father. Amen. Praise God. So he goes on and he says, Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Man. Verse 38. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones 
and the dust, and it licked up the water that was even in the trench. Man, when we get our life right with the Lord, when we start to heal our altars, praise God, when we begin to go back into our homes, you know, we don't have to only have an altar at the church. We can have an altar at our house to where we can go into our home. We can kneel down, we can stand, we can sit, whatever it is that you do. And you can begin to communicate with the father of all of us. And we can begin to speak unto him and we can have an audience. He said, I want you to go to your home. I want you to repair that altar. I want you to heal that altar so that I can heal your own state and where you are. Praise God. The fire came down. And it licked up even the water from the trench. And when the people saw it, they fell on their faces. Now, what are some direct results from repairing our altars? One, we know God hears us. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, that's that's valuable. That's something that you can't even measure the value of. Amen. I want to have an audience with God. Two. The Lord allows us to enter into the miraculous because not only is he lighting fire to the wood and to the sacrifice, but he's even licking the water up that was in the trench. He said, I'm going to do the miraculous in your life to where they saw an impossible situation. God looks at your impossibility and he begins to see an opportunity. Praise God. When our altars are repaired in our homes, the Lord takes the impossible and he makes it possible. Amen. Praise God. The next thing that happened is the people saw it and they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord, he is God and the Lord, he is God. Praise God. Revival begins to take place. If we can repair our altar in our home, we'll begin to see unsaved family members come unto the Lord. We'll begin to see prodigals return back unto the Lord. We'll begin to see those who are far off begin to make their way back to the house of God because now there's something that's taking place that is going to transcend the natural, enter into the spirit realm, and where our flesh could not cut it, something that we built upon the rock is now transcending what we can do. Man, that's awesome that the Lord is willing to go beyond our ability, enter in to where his resources are and begin to exceed our expectations. Praise God. Why would we not want that? Amen. Praise God. They go, verse 40, and Elijah said unto them, take the prophets of Baal and let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon, and he slew them there. The very voices that have been speaking lies into our lives are going to get eliminated. I don't know about you, but I've been hearing a realm of different voices, not necessarily in my head, but I've been hearing fear try to whisper into my heart and make me doubt what God has said. I've been hearing doubt try to come in and mess with my faith. I've been hearing anxiety try to come and overwhelm. But that's why David said, oh, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Praise God. When we get our altars right with God and when we get our prayer life back in order, there is no devil in hell that is going to be able to stand against what it is that God is trying to bring us into because God is for us. God is for you. He loves you with an everlasting love. He has called you before you even left your mother's womb. He had a purpose that was designated for you to perform. And he said, I'm going to bring you through this. I didn't bring you here to leave you. But right now, I want you to know that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked and their evil ways, then will I hear from heaven. He's saying, if you will go ahead and heal what you can heal, then I'll heal what you can't heal. If you heal your altar, I'll come and I'll hear and I'll heal the land. Praise God. This is what we need in our lives. God, I want you to help me so that I can heal whatever it is that I have allowed life or laziness or circumstances or distractions, whatever it is that has come and messed with my altar. Lord, right now, we're going to start to repair it. Amen. Praise God. Let's just go ahead and let's just begin to pray right now as we get ready to dismiss. Let's ask God to help us. We've got altars that need to be repaired. There's healing that needs to take place in our own homes. We can't bring 
bring healing outside the home if we don't have healing inside. Amen. Praise God. Let's just begin to pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we come before you right now, Lord, in our homes, God. And I want my home to be your sanctuary, God. I want you to feel comfortable in my home. I don't want you to feel uncomfortable here, Lord, and feel as if you can't come and reside inside this house. Lord, I want you to feel welcome. I want your presence to feel entertained. I want to minister to you in my home in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that you would help us to break down the altars of Baal and break down the altars of Ashtoreth in our houses, God, and help us, Lord, to repair and to rebuild and to heal the altars that we have in you. God, in the name of Jesus, there's a dying world, Lord, that needs healing. There is a greater revival that you are preparing to bring us into. And Lord, we don't need to question it. We don't need to doubt it. Lord, we just need to prepare, God. We thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord. I pray, God, that you would be with us and allow us to go forth in all boldness. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said amen. Praise God. Well, y'all are awesome. We appreciate y'all coming and joining with us here tonight for this Bible study. If you think about it, share this with your friends. You know, get some people involved. There's a lot of people that we've been inviting to church for years and years, and they've always gave us an excuse Oh, I can't come because of this, or I can't come because of this. Everybody nowadays has a phone. They have the capabilities to get on their phone and watch a video. Most of them welcome it. So they share the video, share the link, say, hey, come to church. You're going to love it. You can stay at your house. Amen. Praise God. I believe that through this, we're going to see greater revival than what we've seen yet. Amen. God's preparing the church to go forth and to do greater things than what we've seen. The persecution had to happen to get the church to scatter so that the gospel message could travel to the ends of the earth. And sometimes the Lord has to shake us up to wake us up so that we can begin to heal things that need healing in our lives so that we can go out and begin to heal others that need it in theirs, amen? Well, y'all are awesome, we love you. We look forward to seeing everybody on Sunday. You know, it's going to be a great time of worship. I don't know about you, but I've been loving the children's church. Man, me and Gabe have been busting moves and, and doing crazy dances and unto the Lord. But it's been it's been a lot of fun. So hopefully you're enjoying it. You're getting engaged. You know, stand up in your house, throw your hands up, lift your head back and just cry out unto the Lord. Let the tears stream. Begin to speak in another language as the spirit gives the utterance, because God is going to meet us here for this season. Amen. We love y'all. Y'all have a good one, and we look forward to seeing you.